right, we we're, we're jamming. Then. All right, hello everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, Zoom, for telling me the meeting is being recorded. This is actually the first time I've tried to record anything, so this will be interesting. Um, good, hello everyone. My name is Ryan, and I am the uh, sober sports columnist for the sober curator and this is actually the first time that we're doing anything like this you if you've seen the first column that i wrote it was writing about uh going to a baseball game you know for the first time being sober um my intent is to actually do a lot of these kind of interviews like this as well because i think that's that's equally important to actually see people and hear people talk um in this case we're going to talk about a great a great experience that is happening at Lambeau um, called the section yellow section and we're going to talk a little Packers football uh, seeing as it is still training camp but the regular season is is coming quickly um, so with me I've got John and Tom uh, from the section yellow uh, organization um, I just found out about them I want to say about a year ago when I had read an article in the Wisconsin Public Radio about these guys. And I thought, this is just so cool. Um, because with so many times with sports, it, sports and beer go hand in hand, and sports and alcohol, especially here in Wisconsin. And to have a section that is all about, or have a group that is all about being sober and, and supporting sobriety at a Packer game, um, is is amazing. So I'm going to turn it over to 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 John and Tom for a little bit, and talk about and, and have you guys talk about where did this all come about, and and more specifically, um, I know that this started off a lot in a large part because of Fish, the the band Fish, yeah. um, and how you and how you were able to translate that into. A, a, an audience which is probably not they're not all fish fans um and and you were able to get the packers involved with this so i'm going to turn it over to you guys okay okay go ahead, uh, go ahead and get started john so the story goes i i was my sobriety date is february 15 2009 um i'm an avid packer fan and also fish grateful dead fan the first thing that hits you when you start your first few weeks of sober is what am I going to do now with all this stuff that I love doing? And I didn't want to <laughs> let it go. Yep. And also yeah. uh, fish was just getting back reunited after a long multi-year hiatus and they were playing Alpine Valley in June. And so I'm, I was only going to be like less than six months sober. And I found, Immediately, I went to the Wharf Rats because the Grateful Dead have the Wharf Rats, which is a sober support group. They've been around since the 70s. And I'm like, I bet Fish has got something mm -hmm. like that. And they have the fellowship. And Fish is always, their pun is always put PH instead of an F. So that's where you get the fellowship, PH and, yeah. then, and fellowship. And I was able to find the table there. And it was kind of like a safe zone. It was kind of like, I was white knuckling it so much to that first set uh, with weed and drinking and drugs all around me. Mm -hmm. And when, once I got to that table, I was like, there are people like me that are trying to be sober here. Mm -hmm. There are people like me that have been sober here for many, many years because the fellowship's been around mm -hmm. since the early nineties. There must've been about 50 to 60 people there. And I didn't feel alone. That's the key. I didn't, feel alone and i wasn't one of the one person out of forty thousand people that wasn't drinking at this environment fast forward a couple of years mm -hmm. now I'm starting to volunteer at the table at alpine and it's just such a magical moment to just bring sober awareness to people and have and have that safe spot mm -hmm. for everyone and be an ambassador to the the band fish who totally embraces the fellowship and the table there and and also mm -hmm. you know all the fans that are stopping by even fans that are using they thank us for being there because mm -hmm. they know that we're planting seeds of awareness now 
Tom mm-hmm. and I belong to a, a coalition in Brown County, Green Bay. That's the county that Brown County is the county that mm-hmm. we live in. Green Bay is, and we belong to the Brown County Alcohol and Drug Coalition for Change. So in 2019, mm-hmm. I remember coming up to Tom and also one of our chair people going, "Hey, I'm going to be doing this fish show this summer." Mm-hmm. Lambeau Field is the epicenter of alcoholism at at for the NFL. It is. Why can't we do mm-hmm. this idea of one table, two volunteers, and that's it, and present that to Lambeau? Um, well, the cool part about the coalition is you're networking with some major players in, in Green Bay, and some people knew some people, and we had a meeting, and mm-hmm. in 2019, we were able to do our first table, and you know the Packers were like, hey, We'll, we'll give you this opportunity. We're going to give you four games. By the way, you got to find your own tickets. And we'll put you uh, out here in the concourse area. We were like, fine. We had a very successful year. Um, Tom, I'm going to jump it back to you because I remember you went to your first fish show to see what the table was like. And then why don't you talk about kind of your experience with, with getting Section Yellow going? All right. Yeah. So uh, John and I, uh, co-chair the coalition at this point, but uh, we were both uh, participants on it. And uh, John had this idea. We were, he's kind of underselling his part in this, that it, he had this really cool idea and was really passionate about it. And we brought it up to the Packers and kind of had a, a lukewarm response. And then somebody within the Packers organization heard about what we were doing and really thought it was a good idea and kind of championed it for us and opened that door, as John mentioned. And we literally had to pay our way to prove that we wanted to be doing this. So uh, my piece of this is I'm, I'm the operations guy. John will come up with an idea hey, wouldn't it be nice to have billboards across the county? And then I'm the guy that says, okay, well, that might cost $15,000. Maybe we can find a grant someplace and get that done. And maybe we'll know somebody who can do some graphic artwork mm-hmm. for us. And, uh, so um, one of the aspects of the coalition is that it's a group of agencies and individuals who want to improve the culture of alcohol and drug consumption in our Mm -hmm. county but nobody had a sort of skin in the game other than most nonprofits have to have some evidence that they're giving back to the community uh, through Mm -hmm. service work or donations or those kinds of things and so everybody had great intentions but there was really no financial legs to our organization so mm-hmm. I uh, said, well, what about creating a nonprofit? So we created this nonprofit called Section Sober. And it's been kind of our umbrella agency that helps support some of these other things financially. So we've spread out to do uh, sober presentations in businesses. We've done uh, that, that uh, campaign is called Sober Green Bay. We have uh, different kinds of outreach in the community, like we've uh, gone to uh, farmers markets and had a presence there, mm-hmm. just talking about what uh, sobriety is about and being. The I think the secret sauce for us has been we are supporting folks that are sober, and we mm-hmm. also welcome people that are sober allies. Mm-hmm. So it's inclusive instead of exclusive and we're not telling anybody not to do anything we're just supporting folks that are choosing to maybe do things a little differently than mm-hmm. the the norm and so the uh the nonprofit has been very successful in having uh personal donations as well as uh corporate sponsorship oh, and yeah. The the evolution that we've had with the Packers is that we are now considered part of their fan experience, and we are ambassadors for really? uh, the uh, uh, 
field. And so it's been really nice that way that we've been able to be incorporated into the offering that uh, the fan experience is at Lambeau. And we're a very small piece of that, but um, we're now um, in the uh, fan manual, so to speak. Uh, and uh, we've been able to work with the Packers to have a designated spot and get getting volunteers that come sometimes from across the country to volunteer to do this. And we now have uh, about 1,700 folks on our Facebook page. And uh, so, yes, I know I'm one. I'm one of them. <laughs> so, awesome. There you go. Yes, Brian. So, we appreciate yeah. you being there. Yeah, and one of the one of the sayings that John has, and I'll let him talk a little bit more about that, is that uh, he mentioned earlier about planting seeds. But one of the things mm -hmm. that we've noticed is that we have sort of a, a campaign of attraction rather than promotion. And mm -hmm. John, the term ripples quite a bit, uh, which yeah. also mm -hmm. fits in with the Grateful Dead theme. Does. So, yes, yes. Uh, um, we, th this podcast is an example of how ripples take place where we end up doing things that uh, we didn't necessarily intend to start out with. And so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sum it up this way. John is the, the two guys in a table idea guy. And I'm the guy that's like, okay, we're going to have this tent and we're going to have promotional <laughs> stuff and we're going to yeah. have a fundraiser and that kind of stuff. And so we kind of complement each other and meet in the middle. It's like, well, why are we doing that? Or is this the direction we want to go in? So uh, it's worked out pretty well that way, I think. Yeah. And so one yeah, crazy as the other one is, is, is slow roll a little bit. Yeah. I'm sorry for talking over you guys. Oh, no um, worries. You had mentioned um, attraction, not promotion, um, which is for those that are in the sober community, that is, oh, that's AA, that's that's big book. Um, tell me a little bit about when you have, you know, with, with the, um, you know, with the, the sober yellow section, um, you have somebody who says, I'm thinking about becoming sober. What are mm -hmm. my options? Are you trying to steer folks towards one modality like, like an AA or an NA or a CA or a cocaine anonymous um, versus another one, um, you know, such as a smart recovery, um, you know, or how do you, you know, do you, you know, what referrals do you make if somebody comes to you and says, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about quitting drinking or quitting quitting using? Yeah, John, so, do you want to talk about the uh, Sober Green Bay card? <laughs> See, we we are the, the, the Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, the Paul McCartney, John Lennon duo of, of sober awareness up in Green Bay. Because, yes, <laughs> we, we do not promote AA. We do not promote NA. We do not promote any mm -hmm. type of uh, therapist. I mean, Tom Tom is a certified therapist. We are not therapists mm -hmm. when we're at the table. I'm a social worker for many, many moons. I work at the Aging and Disability mm -hmm. Resource Center in Brown County. My role, my professional role, and my volunteer role is to provide options. Let me show you all the options. Okay. Let me give you the information you need. You choose which path you want. I'm not the one that's going to be deciding that. So one of the things that we came up with, and I mimicked this from the Alzheimer's Association Purple Angels Initiative, um, which mm -hmm. is uh, Sober Green Bay. And what, what Tom was referring to earlier was, I will go out to businesses, I'll go out to nonprofits, social service agencies, police departments, sheriff's departments, bars, I went from the Tavern mm -hmm. League. And I have about a 15 to 20 minute yep. presentation on sobriety in Green Bay. And then I also give them a sober green bay static sticker that they can stick in their window and that way they know that if mm -hmm. a person walking into that store or that restaurant knows that there is sober awareness there and it's not necessarily a safe yellow zone but they're aware 
Mm-hmm. And then there's also going to mm-hmm. be Sober Green Bay cards there. And on the front of the Sober Green Bay card is just Sober Green Bay. And it's obviously in kind of Packer colors. But on the back is a QR mm-hmm. code to all the alcohol and drug abuse resources in Brown County. And that's where you can find anything you want. And also in my role at work, we also do a thing called uh, Beginning the Journey, where we break down all the mm-hmm. jargon. We break down all the insurance. We break down transportation options. We mm-hmm. try to here. Here's the map for your sobriety, including Al-Anon and also caregiver support. You mm-hmm. find the path that you need. That's awesome. You know that 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 you that you break it down that way because I know for a lot of folks, uh, the barrier you mentioned transportation and insurance. A lot of folks, if they're looking at inpatient or professional outpatient treatment, that's a huge barrier to overcome. And to have that by and to have that resource because you're going to. Um, you just happen to be going to the the bar at you know right across from Lambeau Field. For those who are not familiar, there is a place called the Bar, and it's huge. Um, <laughs> you know, or um, or going to Lambeau, um, and say, like, oh, oh, there's there there's these these resources that are out there, especially if you are local and you are thinking of. A more uh, you're thinking about a more serious or, or not serious that's the wrong way of putting it but thinking about a professional means to uh, to sober up I think that's 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 really cool that you have that yeah Ryan there's, there's whole, one other added so, that is uh, that lots of times it's family members or friends that are know. seeking support and this gives them something to to utilize and and have it literally in their back pocket when that person is ready for a conversation like that, which I think John was going to talk about. Well, no, it's My just, it's a, it's a non, it's a non intrusive <laughs> approach where anybody can grab and go. We have a pharmacy mm-hmm. in green Bay, a mom pop par- pharmacy called Strews. They're going through like almost 50 to a hundred a month of those cards at the aging disability resource center. We're going through like almost 10 to 20 cards a month those are people that are grabbing and going they're starting to get the word out people Mm -hmm. are starting to know that these cards exist out there and it's not like okay Mm -hmm. with with me when i got sober i'm like where do i start do i have to like go to aa and walk in with all this fear and go to walk into a a hospital or outpatient clinic and not know where to go and just look like you know Mm -hmm. somebody that's that's just like a fish out of out of water or can i grab this card kind of do some due diligence have some good resources and then know where to Mm -hmm. take the first step the cool part about the card is it's it's just an easy method to get information into anybody's hands Mm -hmm. which having experience you know um working with um, the Aging and Disability Resource Center in the county that I live in, that's what you guys do. You know, it is it is about providing resources and providing access. So it's it really seems like you have found something that that fits what you do on your day job to uh, you know to to match that with with this passion that that the two of you have. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to Lambeau and if I you know and if I go and I and I walk, you know, walk walk through the atrium, walk through you know, the concourse, and I see your booth, what should I expect there? So, um, you go, you got. You know, do you, um, okay. do you have like? Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, new this year, we'll actually have a kiosk that the Packers are uh, co-branding for us so it'll look like uh, it fits in at Lambeau but at this point we we have a table and we have a couple of uh, uh, three by five or two two feet by three feet posters that talk about what we are Mm -hmm. and we have some information on the table and we have basically four contingents that come up to the table uh, one would be 
somebody who is uh, aware of us, they, they're on our Facebook page and they're all excited mm -hmm. to share that experience and take a selfie and post it. Uh, and they're mm -hmm. like, Thank you for being there. Another contingent is- Yeah, the fist bump kind of moment. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then there's another group that uh, they'll come and they're like, okay, where are my seats? Where's the elevator? Where can I find first mm -hmm. aid? So we're, we're acting like fan services, which is fine. That's what we're there for. Mm -hmm. A third contingent is somebody who is either a third or all the way or halfway in the bag already. And they mm -hmm. see what we're doing and they give us a slurred thumbs up. And they're like, that's mm -hmm. kind of cool, but they're they're already intoxicated, or they think it's kind of humorous because they know how much alcohol is actually taken in at a game. And then the fourth, which mm -hmm. I think is the most special, and this happened last Saturday at the preseason game, where somebody will come up to the table and they'll say, This is my first sober game, or in this case, what happened on Saturday, uh, today is my 19th sobriety anniversary date and i didn't know this table existed and i'm so happy you're here and i think that's really cool so uh again that ripple idea that i was talking about yeah. uh and at the beginning of this year the today show ran a story about uh sobriety in the nfl and how that's mm -hmm. uh, being dealt with and they featured our uh, volunteer table and we're the only um, effort in the NFL that is fan led that includes this kind of aspect of sober fans and sober support uh, and so that really? really expanded the awareness of our mm -hmm. our efforts mm -hmm. and so we're we're kind of morphing into this thing where it used to be oh I didn't know you were here to I know exactly where you are and it's cool and mm -hmm. I've talked to you about it and uh, I'm recognizing mm -hmm. it. So it's gaining some traction, I would say. Don't you think, John? Absolutely. The, the We've gotten the NFL's attention. We've even gotten NFL Films' attention. The one thing that other stadiums will say is, well, we have, we have a sober area. We have a family area where we don't serve alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm glad that you have mm -hmm. that. We are the one, the special thing about Lambo, 104 year history. Okay. We know where we live. Wisconsin is mm -hmm. alcohol driven culture. Mm -hmm. I'm a part of it. I've lived it. You've lived it. Tom yep. lived it. We want to embrace sobriety and take the stigma away that there's mm -hmm. something wrong with you if you're sober. And that's where the sober allies come in because mm -hmm. we want to have our friends and our family members, our coworkers, our acquaintances understand that you don't drink anymore. What? Some, some happened. Yeah. Something wrong with you, you know, for a mm -hmm. woman, are you pregnant? You must be, you know, are you having a baby? When's that, you know, they, there's all these stereotypes about being sober and it's, yeah. it's not that instead I'd rather have, have, yeah. Uh, this is where I bring this up. So let's take your old college buddies. You're going to the Chiefs game this year. That's the game this year, right? The Chiefs versus the Packers in early December. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a night game. And you're going to tailgate. And you're going to tailgate with your old college buddies that you've been doing for the last 20 years. But you know what? You're not 22 anymore. Mm -hmm. You're 40 something. You got kids yeah. and you've got a professional job. You got to go to on Monday because it's a Sunday mm -hmm. night game. Okay. You have to drive back down to Milwaukee. All right. If you choose not. Oh, is that drink, a Milwaukee game? No, 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 it's not a Milwaukee game though. I was just bringing that up as you. you yeah, said but, it, yeah. You have yeah. to, you have to uh, drive, you know, a lot of people drive yeah. hours to come up to Lambeau field, but where I'm going with this is mm -hmm. if you're going to tailgate and you choose not to drink instead of being not harassed, but you know, ribbed on, maybe, maybe joked mm -hmm. about, maybe, maybe kind of made a punchline about, why can't the host or people be like, you know what? We got we got soda here, we got bubble here, we got some mocktails over there. 
you know, and mm-hmm. they just just the embracement that we thought about you, and we want to support mm-hmm. you. Thank you for being sober. That's awesome. You made that decision, you know, not not the not the stigma that there's some type of character defect, if I can use an AA mm-hmm. term, in you. Yeah. We do have character <laughs> defects. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but not that there there's a, a moral, you know, dilemma going on yeah. with you. Because yeah. that's, that's that's a different thing. Just support people that are sober. It's okay and to live in yeah. Wisconsin to be sober. Yeah, just to kind of get folks who are not from Wisconsin who are seeing this podcast in Wisconsin, literally, um, it is the number one state uh, for brandy consumption. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I was swore that before I quit drinking, you could have opened me up and I'd smell like I'd smell like a rich crap brandy. You know, because you got to have your brandy old fashions. You know, and that's. Yeah, you know, and that is, you know, and that is something that that or guys like you and 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 and, and w- women who are participating in this, who are active in this, are really trying to help get rid of that that need to have a have your brandy old fashioned sweet, you know, or your cases of Miller Lite, you know, and and whatnot, you know, just to get just just to pregame. You know, and and get ready for and get ready for for the game. Get ready for going into the going into the stadium. Now, real quick, real quick. There's I had seen on your Facebook. Real quick, there's 72 counties in Wisconsin. The national average. Mm-hmm. I do my sober Green Bay presentation, and there's there's a there's a map out there that's that's shaded blue. Okay, light different colors of blue. Mm-hmm. White. Is, no, there's no. Uh, um, alcohol abuse or mm-hmm. not exceeding the, the national, um, which mm-hmm. I think like around 18 or 19 percent. I don't have my stats with me. Utah mm-hmm. is completely white, okay, completely white. Mm-hmm. The state of Wisconsin is the darkest of blue, and we are all dark blue through mm-hmm. all 72 counties. And then you have some in Iowa, yep. some in South Dakota, some in North Dakota, some in Minnesota. But the the joke, the stereotype, the caricature of Wisconsin is that mm-hmm. we're all drunk up here. Mm-hmm. And it's a reputation that unfortunately is well earned. You know, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, because I know you guys. Like the last I saw, Brown, Green Bay, Brown County, um, and the Fox, the Fox Valley, which is just south of, of, uh, of Green Bay, you were like number four or five. Sheboygan County, which is where I'm out of, um, is also like top ten as well. You know? And uh, yeah, that, that is something that that guy like that groups like like yours, I think, are doing. A hell of a job, just trying to help break that um, that stigma and say, yeah, you can go to a Packer game, you can wear your cheese head, you mm-hmm. can be um, as obnoxious as you want to be, but you can also be stone cold sober while doing it. Yeah. Um, I, I know plenty of Packer fans who hate the Bears and Vikings just as much sober as they do drunk. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed, we do. Now, one thing that that I noticed on your Facebook page is that you have these these yellow mylar balloons. Oh yeah. Um, that you've got. I think was it at the fourth? Is it the fourth quarter or the third quarter? Can fourth you tell me quarter. a little bit about that? So the fourth quarter, they don't serve alcohol. The some of the great ideas or great things happen is out of out of necessity when we did our first game normally you put yellow balloons Mm -hmm. around the table to show that where you are to help people recognize when we first did that Mm -hmm. one of the balloons popped and it sounded like a gunshot or a bomb going off in the concourse immediately (laughs) we're like we can't blow up balloons on the table so what are we going to do with all these yellow balloons we got let's give them away at the fourth quarter the fourth quarter is the sober quarter. The fourth quarter is section yellows quarter. Let's have the balloon be a silent statement and 80,000 people 
where if you see one yellow balloon bumping around, you know that that's a sober person. You know that may be a sober ally. Mm-hmm. Now it caught on. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get giddy about it. I get goosebumps about it when Tom and I talk about this, that we, we actually are starting a fourth quarter tradition in 104 history of the Packers. And this has mm-hmm. been a very, it's, it can be very moving when you do it. Now, number one, my kids love yeah. it. I'm taking my kids to the, the preseason game today. I will stash a couple more extra yellow balloons in my pocket, you know, but they love seeing mm-hmm. the balloon going around the field. But when you're doing it by yourself and you're with a group of people and you're the mm-hmm. only one doing the balloon and then you see other balloons in there. Remember when I went to that first fish show and I didn't feel alone, yeah. like how grateful, how, how blessed I felt that I I can do this because I'm not alone. When you start seeing 10 20 balloons popping around randomly all throughout the stadium at the start of the fourth quarter. You get goosebumps off that stuff. Oh, I'm I'm feeling that now. I kind of wish that, that they would show that, um, you know, at, you know, during, during the game, you know, um, because, you know, for the, you know, like if you are in the beginning of the fourth quarter at, you know, at Camp Randall Stadium for the Badgers, you hear jump around. They yep. always show, you know, all the kids jump, jumping around, um, you know, or um, at Fenway when the seventh inning where they will do Sweet Caroline and, and everything else. Um, yep. To see something like that would be just heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that was really neat, it's kind of like uh... – John was a proud parent seeing his child, you know, perform a masterpiece work on the piano. We coincidentally Mm -hmm. saw on a national TV broadcast, they were coming back from the fourth quarter commercial and a yellow balloon (laughs) passed the the, uh, pan shot of the stadium. And I, John wanted to name his child Mm -hmm. after, you know, is that... That, that kind of excitement. And uh, the really neat thing was we didn't ask to do this. We sort of did it covertly. And then we were uh, mm-hmm. hoping that the Packers wouldn't uh, shut it down. And now they, they say, oh, yeah, that's great. You can do that. Uh, so hey. it's actually a fully endorsed uh, activity. And it's really neat to see uh, those pockets of sobriety. I, I like to... Uh, yeah. Say what we're trying to do is similar to trying to boil the ocean with a Keurig machine, and yeah. so it can be done. But that's a lot of cups of coffee that we're trying to make. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so these balloons kind of. So how many balloons that. do you normally go through in a game? Maybe. Usually, go ahead. What would you say? Go go ahead, Tom. Twenty-five to fifty. Right, and here's here's one thing I want to add. But still. Because when we bring up the balloon thing, I'm going to address this right to all the environmentalists, okay? Because this is the next thing mm-hmm. that gets caught up. Why are you doing that? Because that's yeah. going to go out in out of the stadium and into mm-hmm. farmers fields. Because I was on I was on Ads Goes Wisconsin podcast before, and a caller called in about it, and I'm like, okay, number mm-hmm. one, they're not helium. If you blow up a balloon in 10 degrees of weather, you're lucky if that thing even makes it up and over one flight one section over they're all going yeah. to the they never even make it to the field let alone outside lambo mm-hmm. so they're in there yeah second thing is if you really want to address the environmental issue look at all the plastic one game we go through of of the, mm-hmm. the state of of somebody letting go of a balloon and letting people silently know that they're sober to me outweighs any environmental issue mm-hmm. of 20 to 50 balloons a game yeah yeah well hopefully um hopefully we'll be able to get that number up to a lot more than 50 we might, <laughs> we might. Yeah. yep uh we're anticipating especially with the uh uh increased awareness season that it's going to grow mm-hmm we double, yeah, we double our, our attention and focus 
almost every year. And now it's weird because your podcast, once the season starts, you know, and once again, we're attracted to another promotion. We're not calling news media. Our Facebook group mm-hmm. is a landing spot for people just to talk to each other. And I put up Packer news. Yeah. And yeah, we're, but we will, the cool part is, is that the message is said, it says itself. We're, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, it, people, people can embrace it. Like Tom said, we're, we're all inclusive. We want everybody to be a part of it. The one thing that the other sober groups do that we or one thing that we do differently than the other sober groups, especially in the jam band world is with the sober groups, most of those groups are you, you have to be willing to be sober with our group. We want mm-hmm. you to be, sober, but we also want to bring up your family members and your friends, your natural supports, all those people around you that might come to a game mm-hmm. that might want to support you too. That's where the sober ally thing came mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. you know? Cool. Yeah. Cool. As a person who just last yesterday went to a Brewer game, um, and um, and you know, just knowing that I was there with with my wife and with a couple of dear friends who know that I am sober and say, yeah, no, you know, I might have a beer, I may not, but you, but that's that's fine. Um, we're, we're here to help make sure that you don't, you know, um, if, if you're, if you're, so, um, Mm -hmm. no, I think, I think the idea of not just pointing out the person who, who is sober or who should get sober and looking at, looking at holistically, I think is, is pretty unique. Um, so two quick questions before, before I let you guys go, um, first off, what advice do you have if you if you know if you hear of other groups that want to do something similar um, to what you've done and done very successfully at at Lambo? You know whether it's working with a uh, another professional team or a minor league team, um, you know to to help get that word out there. Do you have any advice? So do you want me to take that, John, or do no, you want to? No, you go okay. for it. Man. Okay, so um, that's actually happened where somebody from the uh, Facebook page, uh, there there are fans from all sorts of different teams. It's not just Packers that are there. And this person had mm-hmm. to be in Massachusetts, and they were connected with a local uh, pro hockey team, but uh, like a farm club team, not not NHL, but yeah. Like an AHL or minor, minor league team, sure. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so they said, hey, you know, we really like what you're doing. Can we learn how you did that? And so basically the only th- rules that John and I have are that if you're going to use section yellow, that you give us credit mm-hmm. for that, be trademarked. And mm-hmm. that if using section yellow as your name for this, that uh, you're not promoting using alcohol. So, mm-hmm. or other, so however you do that is fine. And so uh, they were able to do this. They had a huge commitment because there's so many more games, so many more games. than mm-hmm. the eight home games and hopefully one or two playoff games. Uh, that we would be at in the three preseason. So our commitment is maybe 15 games, mm-hmm. Matt. And that was the minimum for them. So it was like uh, 30 or 40 games. I don't know. But anyway, the, he took that on and really embraced it and uh, created this whole community, Start kind of mirrored our efforts by having yeah. a Facebook page and naming things and promoting it. And so... Uh, we've had folks talking from other NFL cities wanting to do this as well. And so we talk about, hey, bring it up with somebody that you know that's connected with the team in some way, shape, or form and mm-hmm. see what you can do. Uh, and so we are all about spreading this good vibe. We are not sort of uh, cornering the market on this. and mm-hmm. And we don't want to franchise this. It's not like a section yellow viking 
in section yellow bingos that <laughs> if that happens that'd be great uh -huh. but we wouldn't we wouldn't be at those places making it happen we would be supporting mm -hmm. the volunteers grassroots doing it in their communities and mm -hmm. uh really appreciating the efforts that they're making okay so last question now granted this question may take another hour <laughs> The patterns ten and this seven. year. This, this, ten and seven is yeah. where you're going to ask Ryan. We're going ten and seven. We are going to get in the wild card, and we're going to beat the Bears to advance in the next playoff spot, and then we'll lose on the road. I'm just so, kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that's that's John's idea. Um, <laughs> Uh, we want I, to get some sports in there, right, Ryan? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that the um, there's three things going on this year. We have low expectations and high mm -hmm. aspirations. Mm -hmm. The other is that we're really young. And the third That's is true. that we go in the toilet really quickly or we could catch lightning in a bottle. And we won't know until November what we've got uh but uh i think that the the team and the community are ready for new leadership within the the mm -hmm. team and uh we'll see i don't i think that uh it's interesting instead of it having one person that can sort of make things happen that they're going to have to work mm -hmm. much more as a team to make it all happen the, the one thing that i've really like almost really fell in love with with this season is how much the team has embraced Jordan Love, how much the mm -hmm. fan base has embraced Jordan Love. Rodgers did not get that. I will bring no, up didn't. all day long that when when Brett Favre wanted Randy Moss because he didn't have any any talent on the team to throw mm -hmm. to, people were ready to uh, trade Rodgers away in those first couple of years in 05 and 06 and mm -hmm. love has been brought up, been groomed. He's been gotten good raves. We got to see mm -hmm. what it's like in real time. My only hope for, for Jordan love is that he can develop somewhat of the matrix, at least 10% of what Rogers can do. Meaning the matrix of slowing mm -hmm. down real time to go real super slow and be able to see that Rogers is a great, is a, is a great player, but also I, mm -hmm. I do believe he was a good coach. I think when I see hard knocks mm -hmm. on HBO with the jets, he's teaching those quarterbacks how to play. I, I know he did that with, with love, but I also know that there was some yeah. ego to me. I, I, I wanted him, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I wanted him gone bef before he got that second MVP. Cause I knew we wouldn't be able to move on. And with that, but the defense, mm -hmm. if, if we are not a top 10, Joe Barry, you're going to be held accountable. And, you know, with the offense, mm -hmm. this is going to be interesting because Love's not going to audible that much out like like Rodgers would. No. Rodgers is, Rogers is a. No, because his. his he, Rogers knew everything. And, everything. and let's face it, even though, yeah, it, it, it was still very much the Paul Hackett offense. Um, yeah. with with some thrown in from Lafleur, but a lot of it was still Paul Hackett. Yeah. Um, and my concern, I've got one concern I've already told you guys off air, and that is the run defense. I know Rashawn Gary is back. I hope he is fully back. Yes. Um, the other is the young, young receiver core. They got a lot of upside, but I – there, th when you've got a young receiver, a young quarterback, um, everybody kind of learning know. together. Kenny, Kenny Clark. I'm and sorry, David Bakhtiari. Kevin, Kenny Clark and and David Bakhtiari are the two long in the tooth players. Everybody right. else has yep. less than three years. I think our average, average age is like 24. Yeah. yeah, we're the youngest yeah. team in the NFL right now. We went yeah. from the oldest to youngest in less than like two years. Yeah. So that that's going to be interesting to watch. Well, 
you got rid of the two players in 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 Rogers and um, Lazard, and, and I'm blanking right now. But yeah, it's yeah, you know, And but yeah, I think that that is a concern. The other concern is is your rookie kicker. Um, you oh know, my reading god! A story yesterday he is not that he, hitting yeah. anything. He isn't hitting anything with wind. Oh, but he's, he's no. got talent. Let's not let's not forget Crosby had the yips, and I believe in in 2012 where he was barely over 50 percent. Got a, it's, I want to say it was that season where when I was going to games, we we cheered for extra points. Um, the kicker yeah. is definitely an issue. To me, for defense, it's not Lucas Van Ness. Although I want to see him just go crazy. Derek Watt, he's healthy. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see what that first rounder can do, and can Quay Walker keep his composure? Yes. Find, find some meditation, some, yeah. some deep breathing exercises where he doesn't lose it, and 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 let's play. And here's the other thing: Joe Barry, put Jair where the first wide receiver is, and just let He's Jair play what Jair does. Let Jair be Jair. Yes. And hopefully Eric Stokes comes back from that injury and has a much better year. And Savage, too. Because Savage had a really down year last year. I mean, he got benched, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I, I love I love our running back core. You know, Aaron Jones takes yes. a pay cut. You can't ask for a better, like, character mm-hmm. running back core. I can't believe I'm loving a Michigan State wide receiver. Jaden Reed, by the way, my daughter Jaden, just reminded mm-hmm. me that 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 player has her first has her name. I didn't even put that to it again. <laughs> well, that's preseason game. My 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 nine year old pointed that out. So now I'm going to be buying a lot of mini helmets and and jerseys soon. Um, my son's yeah. name. So obviously his favorite player is AJ Dillon. Um, yeah. But that that wide receiver core with with the tight ends, like like Tom said and you said, there is so much upside with with minimal expectations. If we if we bomb it. Okay, it's it's is it a transition? Is it a restructure? Is it a rebuild? Who well, cares? It is. It's Packer history, man. We always move on. No player is bigger than than the Packers themselves. I'm sorry, that's where I come from. You know. And and as a person who like like I'm assuming that you both have grew, growing up in this area, um, and being of a certain age, um, when you had Dan Devine. Did not translate well in the, in the pros. You had Bart Starr, great quarterback, an all-time great quarterback, you know, playing in a great system, not a coach. Forrest set the Packers on fire. Well, he sure. kind of did. <laughs> but then he didn't have the mentality of a uh, coach. He didn't. He he was yeah. he was kind of like that heart, like Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary came in and tried to do it Mike yep. Singletary way. That doesn't work. Forrest, Forrest Greg tried to come in and bring in no. the hard, hard ass side to it. Didn't work. Mm-hmm. Didn't work. Yeah. Lindy yeah. Infante. That may no. work in the CFL, but not in. No. I I really appreciated when we got home, Grin. Mike okay. Sherman doesn't get the credit that he deserves, even though I didn't like him at the time. McCarthy was a great pick, but he was too loyal to his his coaches. I am not a Don Capers fan. Mm-hmm. I thought he should have been gone in 2012. He had the he had the same zone yeah. scheme that that anybody could pick up and play a part. And Lafleur Lafleur is part of that young coaching group that came out. Mm-hmm. You know, he's smart. He's no, got it. that's coming from the Vatry. Now. You, you are you. This is your shop. This isn't Mike McCarthy's old shop. This isn't Rogers' old shop. This is your shop mm-hmm. now. Is Joe Barry going to be another Dom Capers, where we're just loyal mm-hmm. to our pet, our assistant uh, coordinators, and we're just going to ride or die with them? Mm-hmm. I, I hope not. I hope not. I hope yeah. that that our defense, top ten defense, yeah, because. Top fifteen offense, I hope, and we sneak in the playoffs, and we're above yeah. five hundred. You know that. that let, let's not forget in two years, 
uh, Mark Murphy's retiring and Does. we'll have a draft. So there's going to be we'll lots of change yes. in coming around. But you're right, John, that uh, Matt LaFleur has nothing to hide behind Not except that. OT at this point. Not and, anymore. Uh, he's mm-hmm. got to play as well as look good. And, and so we'll see what happens. So like John. Yeah. And his goatee. He, oh, he's got, got the goatee is, and he's got to look good. There you go. Yes. He's rocking the G. He's in the <laughs> All right, gentlemen, it has been a pleasure talking to you. I can't tell you when I've been when I've, I've been telling some people, you know, that that I've been in, that are involved in this it, and I say I'm going to be talking to some of the guys from Section Yellow and and the response was, "Oh my god. That is so cool." And you guys have been incredibly gracious um, in in spending your spending your time um, and and talking about sober yellow, talking talking stuff about the Packers, um, and and thank you both very much. I am I am very appreciative of of your time, Ryan. Thank, thank you, you so much for for having us. And I'll tell you what. On a side note, outside of this, if you ever want to have a sober Packer podcast, I'm I'm in. Sign <laughs> me up. We could we could chat right. every Monday. We could chat every Monday and, and talk about Packers stuff. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, hopefully you won't. Yeah, I'll Packers. have my Waterloo soda or my NA beer or something. Yes. There you go. Yes. Mocktail Monday. Mocktail Monday. There you oh, go. There you go. <laughs> All, All right. right, guys. Thank you. Thank you again. Have a good rest of your day. You Bye. Take care. Thanks again, Ryan. Yep.